heck is happening? Does this mean no bio today? Mr. Carpenter, your mic's muted if you're talking. All right. Thank you for that, by the way, Mr. Cox. Um, I lost internet connection for some reason. That's why I disappeared. When I signed back on, it automatically muted me and I didn't realize it. So, um, now that means that this part made no sense to you folks. A plant in the course of its life makes exactly as much oxygen as it will take to burn or digest it when it dies. So if you, if this plant makes this much oxygen, when this plant dies, it will use up all of this oxygen, turning back into carbon dioxide. Uh, but the oxygen doesn't become carbon dioxide, the oxygen becomes water. Nonetheless, they do go together. But plants change carbon dioxide into nitrates. Nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is necessary for protein. The main thing that you need nitrogen for is for protein. In fact, uh, you have so much nitrogen in your, um, yes, in your proteins that you may have heard of a disease called um, grout. No, grout is the stuff on the wall in the bathroom. Uh, uh oh, goat? No. <laughs> what am I talking about? Gout, gout, no R. Some of you have heard of a disease called gout. 
Some of you may know a disease, uh, someone who has the disease called gout. There is so much nitrogen in meat and in other proteins that if you don't digest it properly, it can build up into um, a form of nitrogen that crystallizes in your joints and especially in your toes and so on, knees make it almost impossible, almost too painful to bend the joint because there's so much nitrogen and protein. Well, so the air is like over three quarters nitrogen. 78% nitrogen in the air. Uh, you know, you think, oh, the air is oxygen. Nope. Fairly small amount of our uh, oxygen in the air. Well, the air is carbon dioxide, fairly small amount of carbon dioxide. Uh, and then there's um, a little bit of methane and a little bit of, um, uh, of the noble gases, helium and argon and krypton. Uh, but most of the air is nitrogen. So this nitrogen is totally, you are breathing it in and out every breath, but you cannot use it. Plants cannot use nitrogen in the form of N2 right here. Nitrogen in order to be used by plants has to be in the form of nitrate, which is NO3 minus. You were supposed to learn nitrate as a polyatomic ion in ninth grade. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, maybe you remember it, maybe you don't remember it. Uh, but somehow this nitrogen in the air has to change into nitrate ultimately in the soil. And there are um, a couple or two main ways that that happens. One is by, no matter how terrible that drawing is, you can probably tell that's supposed to be lightning. Lightning changes nitrate into, I mean, nitrogen into nitrate and then the rain carries it down to the ground. That's why, um, that's one of the reasons why after a good heavy rain, like the last couple of days in the spring, the grass really starts to grow fast. Yes, it got lots of water and it needs lots, lots of water. And yes, it's nice and sunny and it needs nice and sunny, but also it got nitrate, which it needs to grow. It's a kind of, it's part of the fertilizer Remember, nitrogen, potassium, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen is in the form of nitrate. And so N2 gets to be nitrate in the soil by lightning. The other way it happens naturally is through a category of plants called legumes or legumes. I don't care how you say it. Legumes are a category of plants that have nodules, little bumps on the roots, and inside those bumps are bacteria, and the bacteria in the nodules can change uh, nitrogen, N2, into nitrate. Uh, legumes include um, beans and peas that you eat, uh, clover that you might find in your yard or in the hayfield, include alfalfa, not the cute little kid on Little Rascals. Uh, they, they're actually a couple of kind of trees that are legumes like um, locust tree. Uh, that's not the same as locust, the insect, but there actually is a locust tree. Uh, and this whole family of plants have these nodules on the roots that take nitrogen from the soil, not the plant, but the bacteria in the nodules and change it again into nitrate. Now those are the two main ways that nitrogen gets into the soil from the air. The artificial way to add nitrogen to the soil is by fertilizer. And by the way, the nitrogen in that fertilizer came from crude oil, which means that it's a nitrogen that plants thousands of years ago before the flood incorporated from the air. So nitrogen in the soil, either by lightning or by legumes, becomes nitrate in, nitrogen in the air becomes nitrate in the soil. Now, plants take up that, whoops, plants take up that nitrate and they change it into plant protein. 
But plant protein is not quite the same as animal protein. Plant pro any given plant protein does not have, have every amino acid that you need, but animal protein does have every amino acid that you need. So if you're gonna get your protein only from plants, you have to eat several different kinds of plant protein sources to get a complete protein diet. If you get your protein from animals, you only have to eat um, one kind of meat occasionally. And by the way, this word right here that you can't hardly read is animal. So that makes animal protein. This is a stick cow. I know how pathetic, you can't tell what it is. Well, you can tell because right there it says cow pie. Uh, now, the animal dies or defecates. And then bacteria in the soil can break that down back into nitrate. And actually, there is a different kind of bacteria in the soil that can change the nitrate into nitrogen in the air again. So literally, in nitrogen, there are two different kinds of um, cycles that work together. There is the, uh, they're referred to as the long cycle and the short cycle. So one cycle goes nitrogen in the air to nitrate, back to nitrogen in the air. And the other cycle goes, change color to keep them separated from each other. The other one goes nitrate in the soil and the protein and then back to nitrate in the soil and back into protein. So there's actually two cycles looping through, uh, looping through here. So some terms, legumes, plants with nitrogen fixing bacteria on their roots. They can change atmospheric nitrogen, which is N2. N2 into nitrate, which is NO3 negative. Oh, right there, nitrate form of nitrogen the plants use, NO3 negative. Plant proteins, plant are proteins made by plants, duh. Do not have all the amino acids needed by people. Uh, okay. Let me make sure you're clear on this. Protein, um, all the amino acids needed by people are essential amino acids. So any given plant protein does not have all of the essential amino acids. That's why people who uh, don't eat meat or any plant, I mean animal protein, won't even drink milk or eat cheese. That's why they have to be careful to make sure that they get several different plants in their diet to make sure they're getting all essential amino acids. Okay, why isn't it going on? There we go. Animal proteins are proteins made by animals. They do have all the amino acids needed by people. Proteins that have all the amino acids needed by people are called complete proteins. So uh, plant protein is not a complete protein. Animal protein is a complete protein. And as always, if you have any questions about this, you know where the raise your hand button is. All right, uh, phosphorus, one more cycle. And this is a goofy cycle as cycles go because this cycle takes uh, long, 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 long periods of time. Let's look at the words first, otherwise. Otherwise, uh, some of the things in the picture, you need to know the words before the picture makes sense. Phosphate is the form of phosphorus used by plants to make DNA, RNA, all that good stuff. 
the formula for phosphate is PO4 three minus. Weathering. Weathering is the slow, and when we say slow, we mean decades, centuries, millennia in some time, in some cases, long process of changing rocks into dirt or fine particles by rain and then freezing and thawing and more rain and freezing and thawing. Uh, and after a while, you get a little crack and plant roots can get in and expand the crack. That whole process is weathering. So um, concrete weathers a little faster than rock does. And you can see weathering in concrete fat, uh, in your lifetime. I don't know if you're likely to see weathering in rock in your lifetime. Uh, but if, for example, whenever schools open again, if you go out and look at the bricks on the um, on the outside wall of the boys' locker room, uh, that wall was kind of hidden, and for decades, people forgot that it needed to be painted, and so it didn't have any paint protection. And if you look closely, you can see that the mortar between the bricks has, um, the groove is very deep as the mortar has been slowly, slowly, slowly weathered away over the years because there was no paint on it to protect it from the rain and snow and freezing and all that stuff. Same thing happens to rocks, but it happens much, much, much more slowly. Okay, so this dirt and fine particles becomes sediment. Sediment is fine dirt particles, you know, dirt and fine particles that settle at the bottom of bodies of water. Um, you probably learned someplace along the way that uh, the Mississippi Delta is dirt that's been washed down up from as far north as Minnesota down into the Gulf of Mexico by the Mississippi River. And when it hits the Mississippi River, it settles to the bottom and builds up that sediment. Notice that under the right circumstances, under the right circumstances, proper circumstances, that sediment may compress into rocks. Now, I do not know of any um, sediment that is currently changing into rocks. It is, I suppose, possible that in the deepest portions of the ocean, under all of the weight of the ocean, some of that sediment is being compressed into rock. Uh, there was probably a lot of sediment being compressed into rock during the flood, given all of the immense forces of the water eroding dirt and rock and giving the immense pressure of that much water. In fact, if you can remember all the way till then, whenever we're back in school, if you remind me, I have a rock in my uh, display case at the front of the room that somebody found over by the pond by the elementary, gave to me, and it's got a fossil in it um, where sediment from the flood under the pressure of the waters of the flood was compressed into rock and encased this fossil inside. Then someplace along the way, the it got shattered into pieces. That's how we know that there's a fossil inside because it broke in half. And you can see the fossil and the fossil itself is broken in half. So if that's, uh, if those are the terms, now let's look at this process. Again, one thing at a time. Do not try to understand everything at once. Now, the blue arrows in here are referring to water, and the black is referring to phosphorus. So these black things are rocks with phosphorus in them. 
the rains came down and the floods came up. Nope, that's not where we are right now. Uh, the rain comes down, it slowly weathers these uh, rocks into fine dirt particles. That fine dirt particle is carried off in the runoff water. Remember the water cycle, runoff water. And that runoff water, some of it soaks into the ground, some of it collects in surface water. The water that soaks into the ground is taken up by plants and used to make DNA. At some point, the plant dies. And then down here, it rots or an animal eats it, and the animal rots. And then the, uh, uh, the decomposers, the um, detritivores, change that back into nitrate, I mean phosphate, that can be used by more plants. Now, some of this ends up, as I pointed out, in lakes, puddles, oceans, and makes sediment at the bottom. Given a long enough period of time, now, I have to be honest with you, I cannot prove that it actually has ever happened other than during the flood. Uh, maybe it's happening deep down in the ocean, but I can't personally prove that sediment has ever turned into rock other than during the flood. Maybe somebody has evidence someplace, but I haven't seen it. Maybe, that's why it's a squiggly line, maybe that sediment can be turned back into rocks. And maybe by geological processes like uh, volcanoes uh, and so on, plate tectonics, if you're familiar with that, maybe this can get shoved back up out of the bottom of an ocean and be weathered again. So that's why there's this question mark here. I'm not really sure that this part of the cycle is happening in modern times but it has happened historically. So uh, that's the phosphorus cycle. The phosphorus cycle is a little bit, uh, well, this part of the cycle right here may not be happening anymore. And if it's not happening anymore, then I guess it really wouldn't be a cycle, would it? All right. Um, that's all I wanted to do today, and uh, you do have that quiz. Make sure you've got the quiz taken. Most of you have been pretty good this week about your quizzes. I'm glad that you're getting on top of that and getting it taken care of. Uh, let's see, this is Friday, so it won't be a quiz until Monday next week, but make sure you get these done. Today's done, and I guess other than that, no questions. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend.